In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters coming together as God's family to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God's forgiveness. You heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You forgive sinners, Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of my giver of every good gift, put into our heart the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, Keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so, you're, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. How I love your law, O oh Lord, it is my meditation all the day. Lord, I love your commands. Your command has made me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. Lord, I love your commands. I have more understanding than all my teachers when your decrees are my meditation. Lord, I love your commands. I have more discernment than the elders because I observe your precepts. Lord, I love your commands. From every evil way I withhold my feet, that I may keep your words. Lord, I love your commands. From your ordinances I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, I love your commands. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovering of sight to the blind, 
to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb. Physician, cure yourself and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, I mean, I say to you, no prophet is accept, accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread all over the entire land. It was to none of this that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephatha, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elijah the prophet, yet no one of them was cleansed, but only in Amman, in Assyria. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to haul him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> As we are in the ordinary time, this week, this time till uh, the new liturgical year, we are to continue reading the Gospel of St. Luke. Today marks the beginning of our reflection from this Gospel that is from St. Luke. The Gospel of St. Luke tells us that Christ goes to Nazareth. And the first place he visited was the synagogue, where he presented the purpose of his mission. Or, in other words, what we can say in our time, the, his mission statement. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, which is from chapter 61, from verse 1 to 3. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. This prophecy by Isaiah was made to the Israelites when they were in exile, they, when they were living in slavery. So by using these same words as the basis of his mission and uh, ministry, Christ announced his reign of peace, justice, freedom, and love to all those suffering from all kinds of oppression and injustice. Here Christ proclaims the good news of the new era to all of us. It is important to know that this good news is not directed only to the material, materially poor, 
not to all. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for that is theirs is the kingdom of God, as we read it in the Gospel of St. Matthew. The good news liberates us from two types of slavery. The first is self-imposed slavery. This results from personal sins and mistakes we do in our life. This makes us spiritually blind. It makes us blind and weak. It cripples our spiritual life and hardens our hearts against God. And all that is good. And this is the worst form of slavery. Because it affects both spiritually and physically. Only Christ can liberate us from this slavery. However, we can achieve this liberation by accepting the good news and by seeking reconciliation with Christ and with one another. The other type of slavery, or the second type of slavery we can call it is, is that which is imposed on us by others or by our society. This includes structural, economic, and social injustice that do not allow us to live a fulfilled life in this world. Even when we make all the necessary efforts. And this is the challenge of our time. The things we see in the world even sometimes the good things like the technology we have, we can use them for good or for bad. They can influence our, our behavior, especially the young. So Christ today wants us to liberate us from this slavery. Both of these are great sources of pain and burden to us. The one which we do by ourselves and the one which comes from others. However, it is important to know that Christ strengthens us to overcome all this. If we listen to his words, if we accept what he tells us, then we can overcome all this. So let us pray that as we receive the mission priorities today, we may be docile to Christ in his spirit and that we may benefit as well as help others benefit from his mission. So in a united in prayer as we offer this great mass, let us ask our loving God to help us to open our our hearts, our minds, to listen to his words, that we may walk with him. We may listen to him and may live holy life.
Our loving God is always willing to hear from us. So let us present our petitions in the prayers to him. For the church, may the outpouring of the Holy Spirit continually refresh and renew her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public authorities, may God grant them strength to stand for goodness and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are depressed or, or troubled in mind, may the healing presence of Christ be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here in worship, may the Holy Spirit guide us in nourishing one another in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for the soul of Fred Berner, for whom this Mass is offered, may they abide forever in heaven with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and loving God, we present these prayers before you, and we ask you to accept our prayers. We ask you to help us, to guide us, to strengthen us in loving you and in loving one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Blessed be the Spirit. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is through right and just our deed and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so at it is right as and so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the default so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until he come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chance of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and the mystery to you. Humbly we praise that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, Isabel and Daniel, Auxiliary Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be coerced eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God, ye take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The blood of Christ. 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 Blood of Christ, the blood of Christ,
let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by life. Thanks be to God.